Tiberius Caesar is often regarded as one of the most infamous of the early emperors of Rome. His legacy will live on in history. In addition to being scandalous and lurid, the stories that surround him are upsetting to our contemporary sensibilities, just as they were to the sensitivities of his contemporaries. But what was it about his personal life that was so twisted? In what ways did he waste his unchecked authority? That exactly was the one that was responsible for the myth? Who was Tiberius Caesar? There was a lack of clarity regarding the events underlying his succession. In the process of selecting an heir to the throne of ancient Rome, Tiberius was not Augustus's first choice. On the other hand, Gaius, Lucius, and Marcellus, three young men whom Augustus had been preparing for the throne, all passed away under unexplained circumstances. There were many people who pointed the finger at Livia, who was the mother of Tiberius and the wife of Augustus. They accused her of either poisoning these men or arranging for their deaths. Tiberius was the only option available at the moment of Augustus's death, regardless of the truth that may or may not be behind these charges. Tiberius was a young man who exhibited a moderate amount of self-control. He was a brilliant soldier and commander, and he led Roman soldiers to victory in Armenia and Germany, despite the challenges they faced. Nevertheless, despite the fact that he was successful while away on campaign, he detested being back in Rome. He was thrown into the spotlight as a potential heir apparent, and he was surrounded by the intrusive eyes of the capital. He left his position in public life in the year 6 BC and moved to the island of Rhodes in Greece, where he focused his attention on the study of Greek philosophy and rhetoric. According to appearances, Tiberius's retirement was motivated by his loathing of his wife, Julia the Elder. Tiberius blamed Julia for snatching him away from his first wife, Vipsania Agrippina, who was his genuine love. In actuality, however, he was waiting for the succession to play out, which caused the aging Augustus, who did not yet have a clear successor, to become anxious. Tiberius Caesar becomes emperor. The 19th of August, 14 AD, Augustus passed away at the town of Nola, which is located close to Naples, surrounded by his friends and family. Tiberius was granted total power as the ruler of the Roman Empire after the Senate recognized his position as emperor within a month of his elevation to the office. On the other hand, despite the fact that Tiberius was a formidable military, he was not a good politician. It was Tiberius's preference to delegate the responsibility of governing the state to the powerful individuals who were surrounding him. Therefore, he was mainly absent from the process. He was put to death in 31 after being accused of plotting a coup against Tiberius. Sejanus, who was the head of the Praetorian Guard, co-ruled as the de facto ruler of the Roman Empire until he was put to death under the same charges. In addition, Germanicus, Caligula's father, wielded tremendous influence in Rome as a youthful and dashing prince, leading battles and putting down revolts until his tragic death in Syria in the year 19 AD. It was widely believed that Tiberius had ordered the poisoning. Beginning in the year 22 AD, Tiberius began to spend an increasing amount of time away from Rome, specifically in the southern region of Campania and Capri. Then, when he was 26 years old, he moved to Capri for an unknown period of time, leaving the senators in charge of administration of the Roman Empire while he indulged in his vices. Tiberius's Perverted Private Life A large amount of sexual imagery was displayed on the walls of the imperial palace, which was quite similar to the imagery that was still on exhibit inside the brothel Lupinar in Pompeii. Tiberius would direct his tight bums, who are groups of young lads whose talents are obvious from the name, to execute threesomes in front of him in order to stimulate his waning libido. This would take place against the backdrop of pornography. Tiberius, who was not only sexually perverse, but also just sadistic, would feed his drinking friends with enormous quantities of alcohol before tying ligatures around their genitals, therefore preventing them from peeing. This practice occurred during feasts he attended. However, Tiberius was most known for his treatment of children as sexual objects. When Tiberius took a bath, he taught his children, which he referred to as his little fish, to swim between his thighs and chew on his genitalia. 
Additionally, this is not the only heinous claim that has been made against him at this point. We are also told that he would remove newborn babies from their mothers and hold them to his genitals in the hope that they would react to him in the same way that they would to their mother's breast. According to the allegations, Tiberius assaulted two young boys as they were participating in a ritual of sacrifice on the island. When the boys complained, Tiberius allegedly broke their legs. Aristocratic women were also victims of his sexual assaults, and one of them, Melonia, experienced such a traumatic experience that she ultimately took her own life. When Tiberius was in his later years, he had a smelly and hairy appearance, and the audience would make fun of him by shouting, The old goat is licking the old does asses! It is a pun that would have been missed by no one if contemporary allusions to Tiberius's twisted pleasure palace on Capri were referred to as the Old Goat's Garden. This is because the term for goat in Latin is caprea. Is Tiberius as awful as some say? However, we will never be able to determine with certainty whether or not these tales about Tiberius's sexual depravity were accurate. There is, without a doubt, a grain of truth. The weight of sources and the extent to which they are cohesive make it exceedingly unlikely that the entire thing is a fabrication. Tiberius, on the other hand, was reviled by the Roman elite, but to a much greater extent than Augustus, who had been his predecessor. The Roman aristocracy, whose tradition was passed down to us in the writings of Tacitus and Cassius Dio, was the one who wrote the history. It would be beneficial for us to keep this fact in mind. Suetonius is the origin of the most awful information that has ever been discovered. Around the end of the first century, he was employed at the court of Hadrian until he was fired for questionable reasons, most likely for having an affair with Sabina, the wife of the emperor. It is for this reason that his early biographies, beginning with Julius Caesar and ending with Nero, are comprehensive, precise, and packed to the brim with primary sources, like as letters, quotes, and speeches. In contrast, the rest of his biographies are shorter and far less specific. The life of Tiberius that he wrote was written while he was still in court, when he still had access to letters, memoirs, and other papers that were submitted to the court. And despite the obvious bias, the unsettling reality is that Suetonius undoubtedly captures a great deal more of Tiberius Caesar than we would like to believe he does. We hope you like this video, subscribe to the channel if you're a history addict, and please let us know about what civilization or time period we should talk about. Also, watch another video here.